What does the Catholic Church and ancient Bacchus worship, the Greco-Roman god of wine and debauchery, have in common? A surprising amount of things, truth be told, but specifically a connection to the gemstone amethyst. Throughout much of human history, this purple gem has been a symbol of status and wealth. But what is it? Where is it found? How does it form? And what are the religious beliefs and general mythos surrounding this crystal? I'm going to strive to answer those questions about February's birthstone and more today. But first, let me know in the comments what your favorite gemstone is, and when did you first see it? Let's begin. Historically significant gemstones often have very simple definitions mineralogically, even today. A notable exception to this of course being January's birthstone garnet, which was covered in the previous episode. But amethyst in its definition is quite simple by contrast. Amethyst is the purple to violet variety of silica dioxide, or quartz. Silicate minerals such as quartz, mica, and feldspar make up an estimated 70% of the Earth's crust. There are a wide variety of these various silicates, quartz included, and many are also delineated by color. Not all, but many. But where does February's birthstone get its color specifically? Interestingly, radiation. Higher than average levels of certain types of radiation while the quartz was forming caused some iron ions to replace small amounts of the silica in its chemical formula, creating complex crystalline lattice and color. That color can be altered even further, as amethyst is susceptible to various color-altering effects. For instance, if amethyst is left in sunlight, it can bleach, turning it white or clear. When heated between 450 degrees Celsius and 560 degrees, amethyst can turn yellow, orange, brown, or anywhere in between, becoming citrine. Notice that I said amethyst is the purple to violet variety of quartz. When that color changes, while no longer naturally occurring, it ceases to be amethyst. Fun fact though, the majority of citrine on the market today is made this way. More rarely, the amethyst can turn green, becoming presiolite. Again, amethyst is the purple to violet variety of quartz. Citrine and praseolite are just other types of quartz. So one last note on color. Pink amethyst, I wish you could see the air quotes, is not amethyst by definition. That is just a marketing gimmick for what was once considered low quality material. While this moniker is accepted by a portion of the gem and mineral community, it has zero mineralogical basis. Both are types of quartz, but pink amethyst is not amethyst. True amethyst is a historically significant stone, with amethyst jewelry being found that dates back to the Middle Kingdom of Egypt, which was roughly 2000 to 1700 BCE. At this time, Egyptian prospectors found the ancient world's largest source of purple crystals in Wadi El Hudi. I hope I said that right. Needless to say, the popularity of this gem soared among officials and courtiers alike. Until the last few hundred years, amethyst was considered a very precious gem, as it was much more rare on the world scene as compared to today. This rare and royal crystal quickly worked the imaginations of all who beheld it, and many of those beliefs have transmigrated through the ages. Amethyst was a favorite among Egypt's nobility. The pharaohs believing that it would protect them from evil and misfortune, the gem being carved into various images of gods or animals, and then worn as an amulet, bracelet, or any other article. The Greco-Roman world also prized the stone greatly, believing that it would protect their minds from drunkenness and the mind-altering effects of their god Dionysus, or Bacchus in Rome. In fact, the word amethyst comes from the Greek, and also a Latin variant, amethystos, meaning not drunk, word and stone being directly tied to their mythos. The story goes something like this. One day, Dionysus is walking along when he sees the most beautiful woman. Hon hon hon. Instantly smitten, he hits her with his best pickup lines. I get it, bro, my girlfriend suffers them as well. But this woman, named Amethyst, calls him a bounder, a cad, and everything short of a thought. Before telling the drunken deity to go away. Politely. And channeling his inner frat boy, Dionysus attempts to smite the poor woman. Another god or goddess sees this a moment too late, and the only way to save her is to turn her into a statue of pure purple crystal. Dionysus feels bad for a moment, and then goes back to being a frat boy 20 seconds later, I'm sure. Because you can't have nice things when you worship capricious children. Now my embellishing of this story aside, there are several different versions of it. 
One version has it that Dionysus was offended by a random person that, you know, happened by, and he swore to smite the next mortal he saw, and that person ended up being Amethyst. Other versions have it that she was turned into a pillar of crystals, and his tears turned her into the beautiful wine color that you see in only the highest quality Amethyst pieces. Regardless, in the Greco-Roman world, people would inlay their drinking vessels and wear fine jewelry of Amethyst in an attempt to protect themselves from drunkenness. Interestingly, yet again, in the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church began giving bishops rings made with Amethyst to protect them from spiritual drunkenness. Which would be an interesting coincidence if it really was one. By the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church had a millennia of experience in baptizing the religious beliefs of various peoples in their domain. But even today, hundreds of years later, some of the highest grades of amethyst are still called bishop's grade, which is pretty interesting. Another fascinating and rather popular tradition states that St. Valentine wore a ring made out of amethyst that was engraved with a cupid on it. This may be one of the traditions that propelled amethyst into being February's birthstone at all. If you remember the first part of this 13 episode series, I posited that Rabbinic Judaism was very much so a product of the peoples around them, including the Hellenistic world of the Roman Empire. The same can be said for the Catholic Church. After all, it quite literally became Rome. If you are looking for an actual biblical connection to Amethyst, it can be found in the Book of Exodus. You may remember that the famous Jewish historian Josephus was the first to equate the breastplate of Aaron to the birthstone tradition, which is quite unlikely. However, Amethyst is one of the stones listed in the book. It's also listed in Revelation chapter 21. The beliefs regarding Amethyst don't stop here, though. The ancient and modern Chinese believed that purple quartz would cleanse the body, prevent bad dreams, and even create wealth. It was considered a stone of protection for warriors of many nationalities in Europe during the Middle Ages. Much like the Catholic tradition, which likely had a direct influence on it, the stone was said to keep the warrior cool-headed or sober. Today, Tibetan monks consider amethyst sacred to Buddha and make prayer beads out of it. Yet regardless of the various religious significance surrounding this gemstone, amethyst is most commonly associated with royalty and nobility. The color purple itself has long been considered a color of the nobility, so that makes sense. Until large quantities were found in the last few hundred years in South America, it was considered a precious gem on par with emeralds, rubies, sapphires, and diamonds. Once upon a time, the four cardinal gemstones were actually five. Amethyst mined in Brazil and Uruguay were literal game changers, making the stone accessible to the masses. The mining occurs in what is called the Piranha Basalt Basin, a volcanic basin that flowed approximately 138 to 128 million years ago and covered 580,000 square miles of land, give or take. This absolutely huge landmass is a source of tremendous mineral wealth. Not just amethyst, there are various types of barrels and other gemstones that are found there as well. But amethyst is the most popular thing mined. Truly massive amethyst geodes are found in parts of the basin that cover portions of Brazil and Uruguay. These are vesicles, bubbles that formed in the lava as it was cooling, but never made it to the surface, creating a perfect cavity for crystals to line over time. Today, amethyst in much smaller quantities is found in many places all over the world, the United States, Canada, Mexico, Egypt, Ireland, parts of Europe, and more. Each a little different, but amethyst all the same. This all begs a question, however. Does amethyst have any industrial uses? While quartz in general has applications with electronics, microscopes, lenses, and more, amethyst is generally just ornamental. Due to its rich color and durability, around a 7 to 7.5 on the most scale of hardness, it's ideal for jewelry that can survive everyday wear and tear. But what do you think about this deep dive into February's birthstone, and did you learn anything new? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't yet, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It tremendously helps the channel. There are currently 72,000 of you. Let's push for 100. 100,000, not, not 100, 100,000. 100, <clears throat> you can find links to my Discord and Patreon in the description and pinned comments as well. I'll see you all in the next video.